to report to you this morning. I like to uh, I like to bring you up to speed by running through just as I do show prep. I tweet stories that I like, and uh, I start with my my favorite of the morning from the Financial Times headline: WHO investigators probe Wuhan virology lab. So I first got to ask you, yeah, that's going to work, right? That's really going to work. Then I note from the Financial Times, which is probably the world's greatest newspaper, Hungary follows Poland in taking on big tech censors. Now, these are right-wing governments, Hungary and Poland, and they are upset that big tech censors are cracking down on Christians, conservatives, and dictators. Now, This is going to blindside our friends in Silicon Valley because, of course, they're used to the woke cafes of uh, Palo Alto. They're not really used to Hungary and Poland. Big big tech is run by brilliant computer scientists, many of whom never took ninth grade world history, much less AP government, AP political science, much less read broadly in newspapers. And so they're going to wonder... Who's Viktor Orban and why, why is Hungary mad at me? And they've been so careful not to let the woke mob in the left in the United States bother them that they've ignored that there's a woke mob on the right. And so they just, they're not going to be able to win, period. Uh, most concerning story of the morning, uh, in Brazil, there is a new strain of the coronavirus, which has killed 225,000 people. Now, the story says second highest behind only the UK, US. Now, I like to point out we have the highest recorded number of deaths because we have the best public health statistical compilation in the world. We actually count people. We may overcount people. I think if you ask most Americans, they think significant overcounting is occurring because very old people who develop pneumonia and it's COVID related and die who are going to die anyway are counted. I have no obje- I have no problem with that because it gives us an idea of the reach, but a lot of people think we have an overcount. But I don't I don't take part in that debate. I just point out most of the world doesn't count because they can't count, because they lack the ability. So that's, that Brazil strain, though, is a very bad deal. Not like the South African strain or the British strain. We don't know yet whether or not the vaccines that we have available to us will work there with as much efficacy as elsewhere. Meanwhile, the British Telegraph reports a great bit of news about the jabs they are giving them there. First of all, we ought to call them jabs all over the world better than doses, better than shots. You get a jab. Who doesn't like a jab? Dwayne's a walking jab. Everybody gets a jab. Like Ollie and Frazier jabbing away, right? So it it takes away a little bit of the sting, pardon the pun, of getting the vaccine. A single dose of the Oxford Zeneca vaccine, which is the one being used in the United Kingdom, prevents two thirds of COVID transmissions and the first jab present, prevents 100% of hospitalizations. That's pretty doggone effective. Other big story, the Perry Mason impeachment rolls on. No chief justice, an absurdist atmosphere, dueling briefs. Uh, and everybody knows it's unconstitutional, but they're rolling forward anyway. I'm personally keeping a list of the TDS afflicted who are simply addicted to Trump. And they're covering the impeachment trial like Americans care. Now, I want everyone who invaded the Congress, every single one, prosecuted. And I want the leaders tried on sedition and insurrection, and I want them to go to jail for a long time. Horrible day. The impeachment is a bizarre circus that is unconstitutional. My friend Ruth Marcus found a great conservative law professor, Mike McConnell, to say it's constitutional. Sorry, I go with Judge Ludig. I go with Dershowitz. I go with the plain reading of the Constitution. And I go with the 45 Republicans who said this is a kangaroo court. It's a Perry Mason made-for-TV absurdist political drama for the Trump addicted. 
Uh, then we have an interesting couple of economic stories. There's a billionaire in the, in the Wall Street Journal who's making big, big bets on this increasingly obvious story that Americans are going to continue to move, or to, move to warmer climes. So he's buying, he's investing in Howard Hughes Corporation, which builds in Texas, Hawaii, Las Vegas, and Maryland. I said to myself, what? I get Texas, I get Hawaii, I get Las Vegas. Maryland? Now I'm a Virginian, and as I look across the river, I say to myself, why did those people settle over there? They could have settled over here. Maryland has got ridiculously high taxes, terrible traffic, bad government, corruption, and crime, and Virginia's got Amazon. Speaking of which, Amazon. I think Jeff Bezos should be president. Now, I own Amazon stock, so you can say I'm just doing that because I own Amazon stock, and I work for the Washington Post as a contributing columnist, and so he's sort of my boss eventually. Somewhere way up there in the ether, there's a guy named Bezos who owns it. But between Bezos and me is a deputy editorial page editor, an editorial page editor, a publisher, and then there's Bezos. I've never met, talked to, seen, heard from, got a relayed message. Bezos doesn't care what his writers write. He cares about the post. So Bezos has got this amazing company, which yesterday turned in maybe the greatest quarter in the history of publicly traded companies. Maybe. It's, it's so astonishing that I can't even communicate to you how astonishing it is. They had fourth quarter sales of $125 billion. The whisper number was $110 billion. People were going to be happy if it got over $100 billion. It's the first time that Amazon sold more than $100 billion. They sold $125 billion. Net income. After all the COVID stuff they've been doing all year long, they spent billions and billions on COVID. They've been building new buildings all over the place, giving raises and bonuses. Net income for the quarter, $7.2 billion. The growth is phenomenal. The e-commerce sector grew by 50% last year, and Amazon got most of it. Their sales for all of 2020 rose 38% year over year. So if they made $1 in 2019, they made $38 in sales in 2020. They sold $386 billion worth of goods. I, I mean, I'm just telling you, it's nuts. They've added more than a half million employees. And people ask me, why do you own Amazon? You don't, you don't buy stocks. I said, I don't buy stocks. But Amazon isn't a stock, it's Godzilla. And so I buy Godzilla. And Godzilla might go, and, and Bezos announces his retirement on the day of this. They make this report on this day. Now, normally when a founder retires or when Steve Jobs dies, the stock takes a hit. That's not going to happen to Amazon. Because he timed it. First of all, he said, I'm leaving in six months. He picked the guy who runs AWS, their cloud computing thing, who's a giant brain too and a great businessman to take over for him. And it's a six month runway. Do he lifts off? He said he's really interested in the post, so maybe I will start hearing from Jeff Bezos. I don't know. But it's just the most phenomenal thing. And now I own Amazon stock. I don't know what they're gonna do today. I know that yesterday they went up thirty-seven dollars, and the day before that they went up hundred and thirty-seven dollars, and they're gonna it's not a stock for trading. It's a stock for owning forever.